Okay. Okay, it is 104. We will call the meeting to order. Certification of open meeting law requirements have been met by proper posting. I need a motion to adopt the agenda. We have a 10 item agenda. So moved. Second. Moved by Mr. Schreiner, seconded by Mr. Ziegler. Mm -hmm. Tammy, if you need names, be sure to ask. Will do. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried, and we need an adoption for the prior meeting minutes of 31721, which you've had for a while. I'll move to adopt. Motion by uh, Mr. Ziegland. Second. Seconded by Mr. Tullison. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Okay. Mr. Schreiner abstains. Okay, public comment. Mr. Chairman, I would um, ask the chair and the rest of the committee members to extend the public comment period uh, beyond the, the, the uh, stated 15 minutes in order to accommodate all the visitors. I assume all these people are here to comment on agenda items, and it was cert it's certainly going to take more than 15 minutes. Okay. So I, I would, uh, we don't, I don't think we need a motion, but I would just uh, ask everybody to agree to, to do that until everybody has had their say. Um, do you want to put any sort of a time limit on each? Not unless you're going to run the clock, Ron. Uh, I, would, I would ask that everybody limit themselves to the topic uh, to about three. <laughs> limit yourselves, please, to the topic limit yourselves to about three minutes be respectful of everyone else in, in the rooms obviously there's going to be a, a divergence of opinion and um, observe those observe the rules of basic civility thank you and another thing just in case if somebody in front of you or got up before you to speak and you're going to basically say the same Thing that has just been said it probably could be done quicker or possibly not even at all but okay we did not have a list of those that wanted to speak so it probably would make sense to take one from one side then from the other side Randy are we gonna have them address that at the podium yes all the speakers yes okay Chairman, we don't know who's on which side. I mean, I know a lot of the people, but um, I well, think you pretty much have to go by rows or something like oh, that. Oh, it's fine. I, I guess start right here in the front row. Sure. Okay. My name is Peter Jonas. I oppose the resolution to declare Trempolo County a Second Amendment sanctuary because we are in the midst of an unprecedented epidemic of gun violence. On an average, 106 people in the United States are shot and killed every single day with guns. This is a fact. The perception that American Second Amendment rights are somehow under attack is a dangerous illusion. These are the reasons why I oppose this. First, the movement to establish sanctuary counties sets a dangerous precedent by making it appear that county boards and law enforcement can determine which state laws are constitutional. This is not the role of county government. County policies that would evade or disregard state law would ultimately erode respect for representative government and undermine the rule of law itself. And this would ultimately make society more dangerous for everyone. Second. Common sense measures like universal background checks and red flag laws are supported by 70 to 80 percent of Americans in opinion polls. And that's not Democrats, not Republicans, but Americans. 
and they don't infringe on the Second Amendment. It's the National Rifle Association that has crafted and promoted these Second Amendment sanctuary proposals across the country, and they've done this to create a sense of threat and confuse the public into thinking that any and all efforts at legislating firearms are unconstitutional. And Trumpelow County government should resist being distracted by nat national organizations with <coughs> extremist agendas. Third, because a strong majority of Americans support gun control legislation, there may be unintended negative economic consequences to Trumpelow County if we are identified as a Second Amendment sanctuary. Tourism could suffer and national businesses now regularly distance themselves from communities, communities that embrace divisive and controversial policies. So I respectfully ask this committee to reject the Second Amendment sanctuary proposal. Thank you. Ma'am? I'd just like to add to uh, Peter's comments. I'm Carrie Jonas. Um, I'm confused by this resolution because I am wondering who is going to set the law regarding firearms. Who is going to consider what is constitutional, what is not constitutional? I have great respect for Sheriff Simonson, and I voted for him, but I did not vote for him um, to create the law or to decide whether it's constitutional or not. I, I voted for him to enforce the law. Thank you. Sure. Pastor Valerian Aulis of um, Elk Creek at Hale and <coughs> Strum, uh, Emmanuel and Strum. Um, I think for me, the as and this is all new, I've never heard of sanctuary for the Second Amendment uh, before yesterday. And um, I guess my thought here is about public safety, because isn't that what we're all about, is be keeping the public safe? You know, those who own and uh, have guns and like to go hunting, you know, they need to be safe. Um, our uh, law enforcement uh, uh, people from the sheriff on down need to, to be safe in the work that they do. Um, our families and children in schools need to be safe. And so I would like to simply call attention to th that that's the issue at hand here. It's not an us versus them. It's how can we all be safe in being who we are as the people of Trempolo County. So um, I urge you to consider the safety of all of us in this county, not just those with guns, but those who don't care to carry a gun or have a gun. Uh, so uh, safety, I think, is the, the order of the day. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Amanda Heggie. I live in Pigeon Falls. Um, I felt this issue was uh, important enough for me to take uh, some of my precious vacation time after maternity leave to come and speak about it today. So you're welcome. Um, just, I'm sorry, I'm just kidding. Um, anyway, so uh, the first thing that I would like everybody to know here is that I'm not anti-gun. Um, I'm a gun owner. Um, my bu husband owns guns and I'm married to him so by law I own half of them um, <laughs> so um, <laughs> uh, I just the my main problem my main point today is that <coughs> this resolution seeks a re seeks a solution to a problem that we don't have if the main premise is that and we all agree about it uh, that the Constitution is the governing document of the United States of America by law by the Constitution you have the right to bear arms 
Now, if that changed, by all means, let's talk about it. Let's uh, pass resolutions. Let's go for it. However, that law isn't under attack. We don't have a con constitutional Congress going on to change the Constitution. You have the right. Um, one of the things I really worry about are the repercussions of having a resolution like this on the books in Trumpelow County. Will that preclude us from getting federal funding if we're not in compliance with, um, with gun, federal gun laws or even, even looking like we're not in compliance with federal gun laws? Um, that's something I'd really like to know before this committee passes this resolution on to the county board. Um, so uh, those are my those are my main um, I guess reservations about this. Well, this is not my main reservation, but uh, the two biggest reservations that I have about this uh, resolution that you have before you. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Uh, my name is Kathleen Heggie. I'm from Pigeon Falls. I understand that the purpose of this resolution is about gun ownership, and I can sympathize with the concerns of both sides. I feel that the broader issue is the county adopting a resolution that suggests that law enforcement can, uh, at their own pleasure, decide what laws to enforce and what laws not to enforce. The people writing this resolution would like for their laws to be handled that way, but what if it's the laws that they don't like? Uh, you know, it, it becomes very arbitrary. So that's my concern. Can I get your name again? I'm sorry, Miss. My name? Yeah. Kathleen Heggie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Kevin Adams. I uh, live in the city of Arcadia. I understand the both sides' concerns, but I also understand with the federal, right now, there is nothing in Congress yet about the major gun control, but it's only a matter of time. We have to get ahead of it. And I know there's people out there that say, well, we don't need, well, it's basically putting it back on the sheriff. And I kind of take fault to people saying that this resolution would take tourism away and, and basically almost and at the same time attacking the citizens that just won a resolution passed and I feel some people are personally attacking the sheriff and the sheriff's department saying basically calling them rogue cops we have that in Minneapolis or we hear about that in Minneapolis there's not rogue cops here or someone to even proclaim that the sheriff or the county board is making their own rules is baloney that's very offensive we have enough of this anti-cop stuff in Minneapolis and all these other stuff. This is a rural county with many diversities, um, with minorities, including myself. And as a minority, as a male minority that's young, I've never felt threatened in this county or against law enforcement. So to tie a rural county in, saying the sheriff is making his own laws, I've actually felt safer here than in some of the bigger cities. So to even put down the sheriff or the sheriff's department or the people or the county board that's even considering it is wrong. Uh, that with that, I, I'll be done now. Thank you. Thank you. I'll put my way up here. Well, good afternoon. My name is Kurt Johnson. I made a couple of notes here for myself. I. I kind of reiterate what uh, most of the former speakers said and just point to the fact that our Constitution does basically, you know, demand that we follow the laws and stuff like that. Um, I guess as I thought about it, though, I had a couple of other notes that I, I came up with. This um, sanctuary county concept has been going all over the state for, from what I understand, almost a year now, and virtually every other county that's considered it has voted it down. So I'd ask you to consider that as you think about this, because there's a, a huge world out there that's saying, no, we don't want to do this. But I, I kind of wanted to end with something a little bit spectacular. And I'll say this, you know, in, in more in defense of our sheriff's department, I'm not sure if I was a deputy or if I was even the sheriff, if I'd want to have the burden of interpreting or deciding what laws to enforce and not, laws not to enforce. I guess I would think it would be better to enforce all the laws 
Uh, if there's something that I question, then question it and go through the legitimate channels um, and do it that way. But the last thing I want to say is every day we stand up here and we say a pledge to allegiance of the flag, we end with the words, with liberty and justice for all. I guess I fail to see if we become a sanctuary county, how we could deliver liberty and justice for all in accord with our constitution and our founding uh, faith in this country. So I thank you all and I'll hobble back. Thank you. There's just a way confusion. He's going to, he'll just point out. Okay, somebody else is turning. Just put your mouth close to the mic. I wasn't planning on talking, but I feel like I need to. I have a constitutional and God given right to protect myself. I shouldn't have to depend on calling the sheriff and say, I need help. Somebody's attacking me. I have that right as a single woman, a woman, a male, a married woman, a couple, doesn't matter. I have the God-given right to protect my life against criminals who don't abide by the law. I go through a hefty background check. I have to pass a background check. I can't have any disorderly conducts, restraining orders, nothing on my record. I have to have a clean record to protect my life against a criminal who has a record, who has a gun, or a knife, or a rock, or a car. <coughs> this is infringement when you tell me that I can't go outside my home unprotected. And I'm sorry, I'm really upset about this because there's an oath that the sheriff takes, that people elected take to uphold the Constitution. And I'm very upset that we have to come and fight for our rights. Please uphold the Constitution and the oath you took. Thank you. Yvette, Y-E-V-E-T-T-E, Reedman, R-I-E-D-E-M-A-N-N. And please, this, we need our freedoms. We need to stand for that flag. There's no danger, there's no more danger now than in 1976 since we've been living free with the right to protect our own life. Thank you, and thank you for your service. <coughs> we'll, just, we'll start, we'll start here. Just work our way. I can't listen. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Good afternoon, my name is Michael Franks. I live in Independence on Fifth Street. I urge this body to support the declaration of Trempeleau County as a Second Amendment Sanctuary County, as have 15 other counties in Wisconsin. Now that is old, that's uh, back in on one March, I'm not sure how many now, but contrary to what's been stated, 15 other counties have already signed up, including Monroe, 69 of 83 counties of Illinois, 49 of 83 counties in Michigan. 114 of 120 counties in Kentucky, 91 of 95 counties in Virginia, 400 other county governments across 40 states, as well as the entire states of Alaska, Arizona, Idaho, Kansas, Nebraska, and Wyoming. And I'd like to thank two of our principal law enforcement members for telling me that they'd also support it, Sheriff Brett Simonson and our county district attorney, John Sasha. Okay, so what's the threat? What are we talking about? What's the threat? Yes, the Constitution clearly says that our right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Doesn't say a little, doesn't say a lot. It says shall not be infringed. What's the threat? 
President Biden has signed 60 executive orders in 45 days. He has announced that he will sign executive orders empowering the BATF. Here, is some, here are a couple of quotes from our President Biden and what we and why I feel this is a threat. According to CNN fact checker, not exactly a conservative bastion, he told CNN assault weapons in high capacity magazines must be taxed or registered every weapon and every magazine with an increasing scale based on perceived deadliness of each weapon in each magazine. According to Biden's website, the buyback program will give individuals who now possess assault weapons or high capacity magazines, anything over 10 rounds. He says now, by the way, administratively, why 10? Why couldn't it be seven? If he can pass a law saying it, or if he, I'm sorry, if he can sign his executive order, by the way, the sheriff won't have any trouble identifying a law that should be obeyed, because it'll be a law. An executive order, like the governor's order to wear a mask, is not a law. It's one man's edict. So during, to continue with uh, President Biden, you'll have the chance to sell your weapon on a buyback program to the government or register them under the National Firearms Act. National Firearms Act passed in 1968, required uh, and updated in 1981, requires background checks every time you buy a gun. The fable of the gun show loophole where you don't do background checks at gun shows, anybody that's ever bought one there understands and knows, that is a lie. We understand lies. So, during an interview with CNN, Anderson Cooper, President Biden said, or I'm sorry, Anderson Cooper, Anderson Cooper said, there are people who think a Biden administration means they're going to come for my guns, and that's in quotes. Biden replied, in quotes, bingo, you're right. If you have an assault weapon, the fact of the matter is they should be illegal, period. I'm not going to the definition of what he considers an assault rifle. It's any semi-automatic that can be, well, any semi-automatic, period. Your 22 tube feds, clip feds, they're all assault weapons, or can be if the BATF acts on an executive order. Next, we look at what's another threat. David Chipman, Biden's announced candidate, I'm not sure if he's approved yet, to be director of the BATF. Here's a man that does not know the meaning of truth. He says individual county sheriffs are not entitled to decide whether a regulation is constitutional. Regulation, read regulation. This is not a law. There are law enforcement officers hired by this county and not a single one carries enforcement regulations uh, or an executive order. Apparently he has never heard of the 2001 case, United States versus Emerson, and the 2008 Supreme Court case, District of Columbia versus Heller, in which the courts ruled that individuals have a right to keep and bear arms unrelated to an individual's membership in any militia and certainly not enrollment in any state's National Guard, since the National Guard did not exist prior to 1903 and the passage of the Militia Act. So he's either ignorant of U.S. law, which makes him kind of a poor choice to head the BATF, or he's a liar. Shipman wrote on a post online last year that members of the Branch Davidian religious cult down in Texas back in 1993 shot down two Texas National Guard helicopters during, the, during that siege in, Wec in Waco using a 50 caliber Barrett. While we know that is absolutely a lie, David Shipman to head the FBATF is a liar. We know that no helicopter is shut down, shot down using any kind of a weapon. Then let's take a look at the terms, a buyback, which President Biden has decided he's, that he wants to do an executive order for. A buyback implies that the government once owned that gun and you get to sell it back to them. That's not true. The, a buyback is a government confiscation program. You can either let the government confiscate that weapon or that rifle or that property in this case, it's going to be a firearm. Or you can register it. 1968 Firearms Act actually mandates with a 9, 18, or the 81 update that the government cannot retain background checks because the government recognized in 1981 that a registration system is, in fact, the precursor for confiscation. 
And I know the argument about, well, we have to register a car, why not a gun? There is no national effort in this nation to take your cars. And it's not, and in, the it's not in the Constitution. You wait till it's your turn. So Thank you. the threats to all Americans, not just gun owners, and to the entire Constitution, not just the Second Amendment, but includes the First Amendment protection of freedom of speech, assembly, petition, and press. We've already seen and probably a lot of us have been kicked off Facebook just for posting facts. In fact, uh, Facebook and Twitter both eliminated people who were just posting the uh, recent BLM purchase, BLM president buying six mansions. Okay, so he's all Chipman again. He, he tells The Hill TV show, in quotes, I don't think you should be able to anonymously purchase AR-15s. It's not unreasonable for the government to know that you, or to have a background check. I'm sorry. I think it's reasonable that you have, a pa have to pass a background check to own a weapon of war. We already do that. So again, kind of a poor choice to head it. Okay, so we note the federal government's attacks on we citizens with our First and Second Amendment rights. So why would we endorse them? Uh, that is all I'd like to say. I would like to urge the committee not or, or to support a Second Amendment sanctuary state. And that Second Amendment sanctuary state would ensure that we do not follow executive orders or BATF regulations, not laws. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> Good morning, good afternoon. Dave Estenson from Whitehall. Um, I'm uh, one of the co-leaders of the Liberty Alliance group here in Tremplow County, um, kind of a political action group that uh, started um, back in December. And we have uh, many members of our, uh, of our group that uh, have been going around getting signatures in, uh, for in letter of, a letter of support for this resolution. So I just want to re read the letter and then show you how much, uh, how many signatures we have come up with. So uh, the letter states, to the law enforcement committee of the Trumpel County Board of Supervisors, we recently learned of a resolution that has been worked on in our county prior to the pandemic titled opposing the enactment of any legislation that would infringe upon the rights of the people to keep and bear arms. We are writing to offer our strong support of the passage of this resolution. The right to keep and bear arms is protected by both the U U.S. and Wisconsin Constitution. Many residents of Tremplow County enjoy hunting and exercising their rights further with concealed carry licenses. A lot of residents are also in fear of losing their Second Amendment rights right now more than ever. We are a diverse cross-section of our local community. We are farmers, truck drivers, business owners, teachers, police officers, firefighters, EMS, and retirees, just to name a few. We are the people, and we respectfully request you vote yes for this resolution. Um, so that's the letter that was started uh, circulating five days ago. And in five days, 1,488 signatures. That's just five days. So we have a lot of support locally for this resolution in this county. and. You know, uh, I, I named some of the different types of people um, that were signed this. This I also would like to uh, uh, add to that as these are not. This is not partisan. This is I have um, Republicans and Democrats. I have gun owners and non-gun owners that support this resolution. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention. And I have I have the the letter and uh, these signatures if you would like them. Okay. Thank you. Hi, my name is Larry Hoekstra, H-O-E-K-S-T-R-A. It's about as Norwegian as you can get. <laughs> um, 
reason I'm up here today is because of the fact that I really believe that there's a misnomer that somehow gun ownership requires that you somehow are going to become a violent criminal. In reality, uh, gun ownership, especially by law-abiding citizens, really does not exist. It is so negligible in our country. I'm not sure of the exact number, but my understanding is there are approximately 300 million guns in the United States, maybe more, but by law enforcement citizens, or not law enforcement, but law-abiding citizens, it is nearly negligible any violence that has occurred. Going back to the first speaker's uh, uh, comment about the number of gun deaths every day, the number one cause of gun death in the United States of America is suicide. I don't think we should outlaw roofs if people decide to start jumping off of roofs. And I cannot understand why we would attribute, attribute that type of a thing to a gun which they are using, I believe, erroneously. The number two cause of gun violence in the United States is gang violence. And I believe that we need to understand, as the young lady talked about, if a gang came to your house, I believe we have every right to support and defend or try to defend our lives. And we cannot do that unless we really do have a means of protection. So that's why I'm here today. And I really would urge the county to support this resolution. I really do feel that our county uh, sheriff's department does a wonderful job. But I believe that we need to also make sure that our rights are not infringed at all. Thank you so much. My name is Terry Hoekstra. I'm wife to Pastor Larry Hoekstra over there. And uh, I don't know why. Now, historically, when you take guns away from a country, um, the criminals retain their guns. They find some way to get them. And if you watch the news at all or are studying politics, you got to realize they're trying to get rid of our policemen. They're trying to get rid of our guns. Um, if our policemen are gone, how do we protect ourselves? Don't we need to get ahead of this and say we need the right to retain the right to protect ourselves? And if we study the Second Amendment, the Second Amendment, it doesn't talk about hunting or any of that. It talks about us having the right to bear arms to protect ourselves against a runaway government, a tyrannical government. and. I believe that's probably the path that we're on. So please let this pass. Thank you. Hi, I'm uh, Gary Gunderson from Ettrick, uh, Vice President of the Associated Conservation Clubs of uh, Trumple County. And we do support this resolution to make uh, Trumple County a uh, sanctuary county. Um, I didn't realize I was going to do any speaking here today, but I do have one more thing to say. I didn't vote for Sheriff Simmingson, and he knows that, but I do support him and his duties in the police departments. Thank you. My name is John Wallum from Elk Creek. Uh, most of what I have to say has already been said. I just wanted to read the Second Amendment, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of the free, free states, the rights of the people to keep and bear arms should not be infringed. There's something else I wanted to read, another document, that whenever any form of government becomes destructive to these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or abolish it and to institute new government. And farther down, it says, when a long train of abuses and usurpations pursuing invariably the same are accustomed, object and vices are designed to reduce them under absolute des despotism. It is their right, it is their duty to throw off such government and to provide new guards for their future security. Um, Thomas Jefferson, that's the uh, Declaration of Independence, mostly meant to uh, keep the squirrels in Washington under control. It's very hard to be tyrannical, as she said, with an armed people. Um, and that's it. 
uh, we're up to 400,000 guns, or 400 million guns now. This year, 80 million new people bought guns <coughs> since Biden took office. Thank you. Hi, my name is Ray Slattery. S is in Sam, L A T T E R Y. I never thought I would be at a board meeting or any type of meeting like this. For 30 years, uh, I've raised four boys, I've worked hard, and I just assumed, I guess, that our rights, whether it be free speech, Second Amendment, uh, religious freedoms, I just assumed that they would be taken care of, that everything was going to be okay. But you wake up one day and you realize that there's been a dramatic erosion of our rights. And we see it every day and it's scary. Mm -hmm. And once those rights are gone, trying to get them back are so difficult. And the reason that I support this resolution and took time out of the day to come here with, with everybody else on both sides is to be able to get ahead of what they do in Washington, D.C. and to get ahead and stop the erosion of our rights so that we have them for for now and for our children in the future. Trumperville County has been here for 167 years, founded by trappers, traders, indigenous people that all respected the ability to hunt, to be able to protect themselves. It is a heritage that I want to be able to maintain and pass on to my boys and my grandchildren. But I feel and I fear for those, I fear for that right. I fear that that is being eroded away. And if we don't step up and if we don't stop that erosion, it will not be there for future generations. And I urge you to support this amendment. Thank you. Uh, my name is Bill Niemer. Um, I'm a gun owner. I guess that's like saying I live in Truffalo County. Uh, I came to comment, maybe not so much to advocate as to comment. I just wish to remind everyone that uh, when the Supreme Court of the United States may stated that uh, there's an individual right under the Second Amendment. It also said, like most rights, that's not unlimited. And likewise, the Wisconsin Supreme Court has said our constitutional provision on bearing arms is not absolute. It's subject to reasonable regulation. And so I'm just asking the board to think uh, and proceed with caution and carefully examine the proposal. I don't necessarily, I think that, uh, I think this is the third version of this I've gotten uh, in the process. So I, I thank the sheriff uh, for providing me with, I believe, the most recent proposal. I think the board should look at it very carefully. Um, I am troubled by the term Second Amendment Sanctuary County, because it doesn't seem like that's clearly defined. Um, and I remind everybody that uh, ultimately our federal and state courts ultimately interpret the Constitution. It's not an easy job. Uh, <coughs> intelligent and uh, good-willed people can honestly disagree on it. Uh, but I think that before any action is taken, this proposal really needs to be studied very carefully. 
Um, again, I, I feel that uh, the fact that it's not clear to me what it means to say you're a Second Amendment, Amendment Sanctuary County, I think can lead to misinterpretation and confusion. So I guess I'm coming in here to say, study this carefully, take your time. I don't think this is something can just be rubber stamped. Thank you very much, everyone. My name is Alyssa Erat, E-H-R-A-T. Um, most of what I would have said has already been said by the support for the resolution, but I do want to add that the federal government or state government, when acting unconstitutionally by passing executive orders that would infringe on the Second Amendment, it is the county that is our first line of defense. And you do have the ability to interpret the Constitution because you are our government here. You are our police. You have to make laws and enforce this law that affects all of your people here. So it's not doing something wrong by saying, we as a county stand against these executive orders. That is your job. You are our defense. Thank you. So I'm State Representative Treg Pranchinsky. Um, I'm ha having a letter handed out to the committee members that I drafted. Um, you know, I'm not a resident of Trempeleau County, but as you know, I represent the people at the state level here in Trempeleau County. And I, I typically don't like to get my nose into <coughs> county business, but when I was told about this resolution, I felt like there was a need for me to come and speak. And I'm going to paraphrase through some of my letter here. You know, as elected member of the State Assembly, I'm contacted every day by constituents that are concerned about preserving their constitutional rights. Unfortunately, there are some people in Washington, D.C. that have spoke, spoken about infringing on these rights and preliminary actions have already been taken. The founders knew the right to bear arms was vital importance to protect us from a tyrannic government and was not to be infringed. Our district knows this as well. With 74% of firearm related contacts to my office being opposed to gun restrictions and 89% opposed to red flag gun laws, with roughly 50% of the constituents I serve living in Trempeleau County, I believe this resolution has the support to pass. When an elected official takes an oath of office, they swear to uphold the U.S. Constitution. They don't get to cherry pick what parts they like. Additionally, when state officials take their oath, they also swear to uphold Article 1, Section 25 of the Wisconsin Constitution, which states the people have the right to keep and bear arms for the security, defense, hunting, recreation, or any other lawful purpose. So I, I do indeed encourage you to support this resolution and further protect law-abiding citizens and their constitutional guarantees and rights. And off of that, I know there was comments about other counties that have done it. And in my, my work here, I see that there's 13 that have done it. And this is not out of the ordinary that counties have passed resolutions like this. And someone says, why do we need to do it? Well, why not? What does it hurt? This isn't changing any law. This is just elected officials at the local level here in Trempeleau County to put their name on something to say, hey, we're going to stand up for the constitutional right of the Second Amendment. And I encourage other resolutions to go out there, and not in just this county, many counties across the state regarding our First Amendment. You know, look what happened over the past year of the pandemic with the rules and the mandates regarding us to congregate within our religious buildings? 
How easy was that taken away? How easy was it that our public folded all because of a pandemic? Our right was still there. Absolutely it was still there. And I would be here getting my nose into a county that I don't even r live in to push for a resolution if it was about the First Amendment. It was talked about this flag over here. They love that flag. I love that flag. I love this country. I love the community that I represent. I love this state. I love many of you in this room. My point is, is this resolution doesn't hurt anything or change any law. It just codifies what we already have. And if we don't stick to our traditions, they're going to be gone. And once something is taken away from you, it's so much harder to get back. You don't know what you have unless it's taken from you. So with that, I appreciate everybody's opinion on this. I know there's usually two sides to every issue. Well, let's just remember we're Americans and we live with each other and we need to respect each other and stand up for what our rights are. Thank you. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Laura Shufflebein, it's S-H-E-F-E-L-B-I-N-E. -E. Um, I really didn't think I was going to speak today. I came here more to as a way of learning a lot. Um, and thank you all for all of your comments. Um, I have certainly learned a lot. Um, I would like to say everyone who is in support of this resolution, I couldn't have said it better myself. I agree wholeheartedly. Um, and especially with that um, our rights are slowly being chipped away at and I ha could have never really been much of what you would say a political person until the last year or two um, I've always exercised my right to vote but wasn't really big into it kind of saw a little bit of each side and um, didn't have real strong beliefs either way um, over the last couple of years that's definitely changed it has become blatantly obvious to me and um, a lot of the people that I know who also didn't used to really pay much attention that our rights are being taken away one by one and I don't want to see history repeat itself and become one of the third world countries or the communist countries or whatever you want to say countries who have been through similar things and got their rights taken away. They're not in a good place right now. Let's not go from number one country in the world to one of the other countries that has had everything taken away. Um, thank you all again for um, a great lesson. No other speakers? I got Can I do them? Yep. <coughs> Go ahead. Uh, my name is Jim Franks, Osseo, Wisconsin. Anyway, I'd just like to just keep it short here, too. Everyone did a nice job. I would like you to encourage you to uh, support the resolution. I think it's real. Uh, it's a good way to send a message to Madison and to Washington that the people are awake out here and we're watching what they're doing. I'd like to say thanks to local law enforcement for standing with the people. Uh, I guess in the last year we've, uh, we've seen what's gone on with Antifa and BLM, how they've been allowed to just go around terrorizing cities, smashing windows, burning buildings, and our politicians that are in government right now in leadership are the ones that let them do that continually night after night and they're still doing it and they still won't put their foot down so these same politicians that are pushing gun control are the same ones that are we're backing Antifa and BLM with all the crimes so we need we need somebody at the local local level to protect the people from Antifa and from these politicians that have <coughs> no respect for the Constitution they have no respect for our rights at all so we need we just need to stand up and and push something through that we can just send them a message that we need to uh, 
that uh, that the local law enforcement are, are here to protect the people and we you know we don't you know we don't really we don't agree at all with what the politicians in Washington are doing you know as far as the Antifa BLM deal so that's all I guess I had to say Nobody else to speak? Well, next we have resolution by Tremble County Associated Rod and Gun Club. Yeah, my name is Junior Prudlick, and I'm a member and on the board of the Tremble County or the Associated Conservation Clubs of Trimple County. A private citizen brought this, brought this to our attention. And <clears throat> I want to first state that we're a conservation club <clears throat> and we do a lot of things for conservation and for the recreation of, of citizens. The reason we took this up and I, I think the reason he brought it to us is because of our affiliation with so many of the rod and gun clubs and the conservation clubs around the county there's nine of them that are included in our association i i think they thought that was a way that they could reach out and see what there was um from that point I think I got picked out because I don't know biggest sucker or kind of I could write the prettiest or whatever the reason but it was given to me to to handle <clears throat> so what I did was I contacted several states that already passed this I contacted several counties that have already passed this and they sent me their resolutions some of them were very simple you could tell what they had for backing they just passed it on a few lines and some of them were very long and very in-depth <clears throat> the one thing that was brought to our attention immediately and I had never I hadn't heard this term very much before until our governor made the statement about proposing a red flag law and so I looked into a little bit and well I'm biased so I'd like to have a law enforcement officer give you their opinion not opinion but tell you what the red flag law really is would you do that mr. Semmingson so I'm sheriff Brett Semmingson and um, he did ask me to address what red flag law means and um, I'm not an attorney I don't pretend to be an attorney and I don't uh, pretend to be any kind of a Supreme Court um, um, lawyer um, all I simply did was go to Wikipedia and I got their definition of what a red flag law is and it is what I understand it to be so I'm gonna read the, the Wikipedia definition of red flag law a red flag law is gun control law that permits police or family members to petition a state court to order the temporary removal of firearms from a person who may present a danger to others or themselves a judge makes the determination to issue the order based on statements and actions made by the gun owner in question. Refusal to comply with the order is punishable as a criminal offense. After set time, the guns are returned to the person from whom they were seized unless other court hearings extends the period of conversation, confiscation. That, now uh, again, Wikipedia is a pretty um, reputable site, I think, for information they cite all of their sources uh, that's and that's why I went to it to see um, exactly what red flag law means um, that's what it means to me is it is um, it's you know it's a means to um, just it's like a restraining order I guess to remove firearms from somebody a courts to deem um, um, danger um, it doesn't talk about due process or anything like that that's a whole nother discussion with uh, with the red flag law and uh, and I think that's where the gun rates uh, come into play is uh, the due process piece of that so and you're right that's that's what happens when I checked into it too I found out that the due process is what we lose in the red flag law when the guns are confiscated it is 
it is said in there that you get them back but it's almost impossible to get them back if we lose due process we're losing one of our rights in fact it's a huge part of our rights so that's why I'm here today um, this resolution doesn't any doesn't affect any laws that are already on the book all it's asking for you to do is ratify those laws we already have I heard mention of the NRA today the NRA doesn't have a thing to do with this this was brought up by local citizens concerned citizens concerned about their rights you heard about crime and things like that well people there's a place out there called the uh, <laughs> no I can't now I'm flustered um, it's the black market there's there's countries all around the world that manufacture firearms shutting down firearms in Wisconsin, in Wisconsin or in, in the US isn't going to change anything you, criminals are still going to get firearms no matter what they buy them on the black market in fact there is a documented case of one of our own government organizations selling automatic weapons on the black market to drug dealers in a different country those weapons came back into the United States and this is documented and were, was used against American citizens what did that have to do with legal law-abiding citizens in our country our own government stuck us in the back and now they're trying to take our firearms I read recently that firearms are used it over two million times a year in defense of people use them in defense it doesn't even say how many times just showing a firearm stopped a crime it doesn't even show how many times the threat of a firearm stopped a crime we don't want our American citizens the legal and lawful citizens to become lambs we don't want anybody I mean the the problem isn't the legal law-abiding citizens I was in an ins insurance company the other day and I was talking to him about this resolution and they said why are you doing it now so I asked them you're selling insurance why do people buy insurance well he said they want to protect their property they want to protect their house and things like that I said why don't wait why don't they wait till the house is on fire before they make the phone call that's all this is people we want to ratify the laws we already have on the book we don't want to lose any of our rights it's an insurance policy and for the lawful citizens in your country I hope you stand by and ratify the laws that we have in place because if you think disarming the legal lawful citizens of the United States is going to make this a safer country then meet me after this meeting I have a bridge for sale You've got it in your packet. Want to read it? You want me to read it? Okay. Everybody's got a copy? Opposing the enactment of any legislation that would infringe upon the right of the people to keep and bear arms. Whereas the right of the people to keep and bear arms is guaranteed as an individual right under the Second Amendment to the United States Constitution and under the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. 
Article 1, Section 25, the people have the right to keep and bear arms for security, defense, hunting, recreation, or any other lawful purpose. Whereas the right of the people to keep and bear arms for defense of life, liberty, and property is regarded as an inalienable <coughs> right by the people of Trempeleau County. Whereas the people of Trempeleau County derive economic benefit from all safe forms of firearm recreation, hunting, and shooting conducted within the Trempeleau County, within Trempeleau County, using all types of firearms allowable under the United States Constitution and the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And whereas Trempolo County Board of Supervisors are elected to represent the people of Trempolo County and are duly sworn by their oath of office to uphold the United States Constitution and the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And whereas the members of the Wisconsin House of Representatives and the Wisconsin Senate are elected by the people of the State of Wisconsin and are duly sworn by their oath of office to uphold the United States Constitution and the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And whereas Trempolo County Board of Supervisor opposes any legislation considered by the Wisconsin State Legislature or the Wisconsin Senate that would infringe on the right to keep and bear arms and would ban the possession and use of any firearms, magazines, ammunition, or body armor now employed by individual citizens of Trempolo County for defense of life, liberty, and property, or would require a firearms owner ID card or tax the possessions of firearms or ammunition within Trempolo County. Be it resolved that the Trempolo County Board of Supervisors hereby declares Trempolo County to be a second amendment, amendment sanctuary county. Be it further resolved that the Trempolo County Board of Supervisors opposes the enactment of any legislation that would infringe upon the right of the people to keep and bear arms and considers such laws to be unconstitutional and beyond lawful legislative authority. Be it further resolved that the Trempolo County Board of Supervisors supports the non-enforcement of unconstitutional firearms laws against citizens of Trempolo County. Be it further resolved the Trempolo County Board of Supervisors will not appropriate any funds that support unconstitutional laws enacted against the citizens of Trempolo County. Be it further resolved that the Trempolo County Board of Supervisors directs the county clerk to forward this resolution to the governor assembly members and senators representing Trempolo County and the Wisconsin Counties Association. <clears throat> I guess it, it is up to us to send this back to, if we vote on it, to send it back to executive finance. Is that my understanding? To the full county board? I mean, what okay. you're looking for is a motion. To we need a motion. To approve or to reject. Mr. Chair, question? Yes. Um, it's my understanding that resolutions that come before committees or the full board um, have been reviewed by the county's legal representative? Yes. And. Um, did not see on this document that the county's attorney has had a chance to go over this version of the resolution. Okay. And I, um, uh, many points made today, but until our legal representative tells us that this is appropriate and um, the words are legally correct, uh, I would feel better voting on it after I hear from Corporation Council. Yes, he was. He had a hearing at one o'clock. He said and he was going to try to get down here as soon as he could get out of there. Oh. So I don't have any idea what time that'll be, Dan. But I, I think it would be a, a good idea to have him look. Look, I don't know if he has done that. Apparently not. If, if he hasn't signed on it, so. I, I will um, make a motion to table this issue until we can hear from the county's <coughs> corporation council. Okay. I'll second that. Motion by 
Mr. Schreiner, seconded by Mr. Ziegler. Yeah, and I would add that um, I had contact, contact to this. The, there was a previous a resolution went to the Exec Finance Committee about three weeks ago, and that was reviewed by the Corporation Council. And um, I had asked the sheriff over the weekend about what we, we don't have a we have no reading we have no opinion on this one. So uh, I, I think the motion to to table until it has been reviewed by Corp Council. Okay, will be appropriate. and hopefully he will still be down here. I don't know when. I don't know be. if he's going to walk in the door and review it for us, Brian. No, I don't know if he can either. But would. Well, and another point, if I may. Yes. Um, and I will apologize to all the people who were good enough to take time out of their day to come here and let us know how they feel. I would um, encourage all of the public to do so on various topics. It would um, make sense to me that having the right to participate in your government should be acted on, and I, again, appreciate it. But this is an explanation, not an excuse. This I was recently appointed to this committee yesterday. Um, I gladly sit here, but in the last several minutes was the first time I saw this version of the resolution right. because of that fact. Exactly. I had seen the original resolution, but uh, um, <coughs> as I get older, I have more trouble digesting what I'm reading. So um, I would like to hear from the county's corp council. That's why we hire him and pay him right and um, I uh, will welcome his would, would input you, would you would change that motion we have you need a time would you change the motion to table it until the next monthly meeting and yep. I'll second that if you do yes I'll do that the motion amended to table it for a month till law enforcement meets in May Question, Junior? No, just a, uh, a point of clarification. I brought this resolution, this same identical resolution, to this committee a year ago and presented it to the committee, and the committee read it over and, and suggested I go prove county support. So this exact resolution has been here for a year now. Is this this is a different one though than it was at executive finance? Yes. This yes. is a different one. A yes. Different one. This is the one that I brought a year ago. So the the no wording has been changed at all. Okay. <coughs> yes. Do we know if the corporate council had maybe has already reviewed it? I, I don't know that. I I got the impression that he hadn't he didn't tell me that he had he was only here briefly before he left for court Brett I can answer that um, he and I had a discussion this morning and his um, answer was he may have but he has he doesn't recall if he reviewed this one or not and then he has been in court all day today so um, he has been limited on what he can review but um, he did say that um, he he may have but he doesn't doesn't recall and that, like again, like uh, Junior said, that was a year ago. So, in t we have a motion to table it until he's had a chance to review it oh, in a second. Until I, the next meeting. Yeah, in at the next meeting. Yeah. May's uh, regular law enforcement committee meeting. And a second. Okay. Any other discussion? All those in favor of tabling it till the May meeting, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried until Corp Council can take a look at it and see if there's any changes that would have to be made according to the law. Evidently, our clerk is watching. I just got an email from him that's not in the proper form the way for coming. It's not in the proper Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. 
sit down by the mic and talk? Or? You got one right here. This resolution is not on the proper template. Well, I think waiting the month will also enable uh, the proponents to work with Corp Council and the clerk to get things in the proper form. And it will give my sluggish brain time to come up to speed. Okay. Mr. Chairman, may I make a, just a quick comment? Yes. So uh, for those of you in the virtual world, the Sheriff Semis again, um, I just want to comment that um, by no fault of anybody, um, I have been brought into this, and um, I just want to comment to all sides, both people, uh, or both sides, everybody involved, um, to thank that I thank you for being civil with me, um, whether you oppose it or are for it. Um, it's no easy job, and there may be some misconceptions here that we have to iron out as well. So um, I just want to thank you all for that. Okay. Item number seven, jail medical and mental health contracts. All right, so um, since th at the last meeting, um, there was some discussion of our medical and mental health contracts. Yes. Um, for a number of years, those contracts have been with the healthcare center. And um, uh, there are four in total that have to do with jail medical and jail mental health. And um, <coughs> during the COVID pandemic last year, uh, we did see some um, what we believe are deficiencies in their ability to um, meet the terms of the contract. And I don't necessarily fault them. Um, I think they had some reasons um, that may be justifiable. However, it, I think it still put the county at risk <coughs> because we had a substantial decrease, I believe, in the services to our inmates. And to avoid liability, we need to make sure we are pro providing um, mental health and medical services to our inmates according to DOC code and, in my opinion, according to humanity as well. So um, with that being said, um, it was mutually um, agreed upon, basically, <coughs> by the health care center did um, issue a letter to opt out of the of the jail nurse contract um, effective the end of May and um, because the four contracts are also closely tied together I um, issued a letter to them uh, opt opting out of all four contracts and I have since been soliciting um, information and bids from two providers that um, that specialize in jail medical and mental health and um, I'm, I'm interested in extending a contract for the remainder of this year. And then we will discuss a new contract for, for uh, years going forward. I am not at the point of uh, accepting a contract from any one of them yet. I'm just bringing this to your attention today that this is happening. And um, we are very close. Um, I'm waiting for one to extend a contract to me and that will be sent off to Rick for review. Um, and uh, from a budgetary perspective, um, it, it will be a few thousand dollars um, above what I have in my budget right now. If all services were to be used to their extent, that typically doesn't happen in a year's time. There's usually an overage or an underage at the end of the year. So I'm not asking for any, any additional funds um, when this comes to light um, next month, or it actually will have to be done quicker than that, but I'll keep you up to date next month. Um, so I'm just bringing it to your attention that we will be changing providers for our medical and mental health services in the in the county jail. So, <coughs> okay, uh, Ron, I have a question. Yes, a couple, uh, couple of questions for the sheriff. When does the um, if you're ending the contracts, when do they end? So, so uh, normally they end. It's annually we renew them, but the the date of expiration or the date of termination is May 31st. Um, the new contracts will be in place on June 1st. It will very likely be um, with some of the current providers. Um, the service we use, um, we'll try to use local providers. Um, it, it's it'll be it's just uh, managed a little differently, um, but uh, the, some of the faces may be familiar. Yes. Follow up. Um, Sheriff, you mentioned it may cost more. Right. Um, 
I don't think the committee is going to be so concerned about the price as long as the service delivered is effective. I, and yeah, it, it is a very difficult. Um, I know I'm, we talked about this in previous meetings, so I know I'm acquainted with the problems. I think all the committees are acquainted, except maybe Dan. Everybody's acquainted with the problems. Um, it's a very difficult service to provide. How um, is there some way you can, um, you know, affect some kind of quality control over the person or the, the agency, whoever that you hire? Um, how are you going to overcome that hurdle? Well, it's you know we're in a unique position where we get a seven-month trial period for one thing, um, with with a new company before we have to negotiate a new contract for the following year. Um, we will certainly. You know the the jail staff. Um, they work very closely with those providers. They provide. You know they keep their thumb on the on the um, or keep our eye on the temperature of what you might say of how things are going. Um, that's really the only way that we can determine. And and they report and, or communicate with the Department of Corrections um, um, quite frank quite often um, <coughs> to and to make the determination whether the level of services provided meets the DOC code. Does so. the DOC the DOC Meaning, Brad Hoover, does he have any say in who you hire, or is this really your decision? He, he does not have a say in who we hire. He just has a say in whether or not we, as as a jail, are providing the services necessary. Um, it's our responsibility to provide those services. Um, who we use is up to us. He just makes sure we're providing those services. Now, you, you will keep the committee informed as to how this goes along. Absolutely. Got a transition to go through here. Yep, absolutely. Yep. Okay. Any other questions on that particular item? I guess um, I just you know I I, I just want to mention that it's a unique search situation. I don't fault anybody. Um, it's just um, you know we we need to make sure that we provide all those services to to our jail, and because of the situation last year, it just wasn't happening. So. Right. Okay. Discussion and possible action on monthly department and jail activities slash concerns. Special recognition awards. So in your packets, you will see um, a couple of recognitions. Uh, <coughs> this is something I intend to do more often. Um, we've kind of picked a starting point where we're going to recognize our employees for um, jobs, what I feel could be above and beyond um, what a normal day would entail. Uh, one you'll see in there is for um, our drug investigator, um, Eduardo Hernandez, and that particular incident is where um, a traffic stop went bad, a, um, um, a, a person got out and fled, um, <coughs> the, the canine was deployed, uh, you know, drugs were, were suspected, impairment was suspected, and the person ended up out on um, a, an icy body of water and fell through the ice. And um, you know, in in with all that was going on, they you know they put uh, life first and foremost, and they were able to get the person out of the out of the water. And I offer recognition <coughs> for that. Okay. Uh, the other one you see there is um, Deputy Tim Wilson. Um, his um, keen eye and uh, rapid actions led to the almost immediate apprehension of a. Um, a robbery suspect from down in the city of Arcadia here about a month and a half, two months ago, where the Express Mart was robbed at gunpoint. And um, uh, uh, Deputy Wilson, uh, using his training experience and um, albeit luck, his location, he was able to apprehend that person um, within minutes of the call coming in. So I, I recognize them and I wanted you guys to, to see that recognition. And um, here in the new future, we will start making um, some public notifications of those same recognitions as well. So. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yep. Questions regarding monthly vouchers. Um, I have no questions, but I do have a comment. You'll see in there that um, we did receive our our annual grant funding for EPCRA and EMP. G. EMTG. <coughs> EMTG. And uh, the, uh, the smaller of the two amounts is what we budgeted um, or what we expected. 
Uh, the larger of the two amounts is about uh, twelve to fifteen hundred dollars more than we expected. So um, we come out to the good with those two grants this year. Those two grants pay for the wages for um, our uh, emergency government director. So they assist in paying the wages. Yeah, they don't pay them all. Yeah, they 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 pay <laughs> they pay a portion of the wages. All of that money goes towards the wages, but it, it doesn't necessarily pay for one hundred percent of the wages. Correct. So um, other than that, I didn't have any other comment or concerns with uh, vouchers, so. Anybody else have any questions or concerns with them? Discussion of general operations. Um, so uh, I, I mentioned at the county board meeting last night um, some of the statistics, and um, all of you heard that. I'm not going <coughs> to bore you with that again. Um, can I see that just quickly? No, this, um, where do I have it here? Do you, you don't have it in there yet, do you? So currently, I just I wanted to give you some updated jail numbers. Um, at, you know, they change daily. So today now, um, I did a, a recalculation of the numbers in our jail. Um, currently, we have 38 total in custody. Um, uh, at, the, at the county board meeting yesterday, we were at 40. So that's how fast they fluctuate. Uh, we have nine in Clark County, uh, six in Barron County, two in Juneau County, and four on electronic monitoring. Um, because of isolation and segregation needs um, and lack of ability for uh, nearby counties to take our inmates, uh, we have extended out to as far as Barron and Juneau counties now. Um, and then we have one in non-contract housing, which means that person is serving a sentence for another county, and at the same time, he's serving our sentence as well. So um, that's what that means. So total today, we have 38 in custody. Um, again, the numbers are, are inching up each month, um, as we expected they would. And, um, but uh, we're getting through, and I give credit to my, uh, my jail administrators for making sure that we are getting through this. It's been... Uh, scheduling nightmare for I'm sure for them to uh, every every day to decide who goes where and who comes back from where um, plus they get their other duties done as well so um, I just uh, want to com comment uh, to them as to how well they're doing with that so um, on another note um, I did receive a uh, donation to our canine program from the Ettrick Rod and Gun Club so we, I want to publicly thank them for their donation to the program and uh, with that, unless Tanya has anything else to address with the jail, um, I put, told her I'd put her on the spot today, but uh, I have nothing else, so. No, I don't really have anything new to report either. Thank you. So with that, um, I will entertain any questions. I think you should mention that tomorrow is Tanya's birthday. <laughs> <laughs> now I know that. So sure it's okay if we put that on Facebook, right? <laughs> So, no, thank you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you. Happy birthday. Uh, yes. Yep. Yep. Um, the reason I haven't, that I want to do a photo opportunity with them as well. And so I, I would do that, bring that to the county board as well. So they were waiting for uh, um, the, the, the lad man out to come up and get her for me to go down and get a picture with them. So. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Brett. We have a new member that has arrived. I'm not sure where things are at, so I'm not sure what's the status of things. It's all your fault, Rick. Uh oh, what did I do? That's where we're at. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I made a motion to table the resolution till next month's meeting because I was unaware of, I mean, today was the first time I had chance to read the resolution okay and was not aware whether or not you had looked at that latest version and given your a-ok -okay on the language uh, we mm -hmm. did find out after um, a short time that the resolution was not presented in the appropriate form mm -hmm. to the county so um, it was a unanimous vote on the, on the tabling but um, so there. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we didn't know if you had seen it, read it, or, or what. It, the one that my understanding that was presented today, I saw it this morning, um, so I did have a chance to review it. However, I was reminded that I may have seen it 
previously. Um, I didn't remember you it. You told a year ago. But I might have seen it a year ago. The one that was presented to the Executive Finance Committee, that one I did draft. Unfortunately, I was on vacation when they met, so I wasn't able to give input at that particular meeting. Um, so, so I have ultimately seen the various versions. Yes. Um, I'm going to assume you'll you'll give us uh, your opinion prior to the May's meeting. Certainly. On on the uh, resolution mm -hmm. and and how it's worded and certainly a yay or nay on, on moving forward. It, it, and just as some food for thought for the committee for the May meeting and in, in anticipation of it, some of the really the concerns I have is when it refers to the constitutional versus unconstitutional laws that are passed. Um, the concern I have is that. You know, we as county members, the committee or the board, we don't get to determine what's constitutional and what's unconstitutional. That's a court function. So when it talks about enforcing or not enforcing unconstitutional laws, certainly if a court strikes down a law as unconstitutional, you, nobody has to follow it, of course. Um, but until that is done, you know, laws are presumed to be constitutional under the law. So the wording regarding the unconstitutional laws being enforced or not being enforced, just some tweaking of that language, in my opinion, would be appropriate before it actually would would move forward. Or that would be my recommendation before it would be voted on anyhow. So. Um, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, Ron, I'd also like to address, um, Rick, pardon me, I wanna, don't want to turn 360 degrees, so I'm just going to talk into the mic. Certainly. Um, the, the version, the version that went, the version of the resolution that came before the Exec Finance Committee three weeks ago contained two paragraphs that were highlighted in yellow. Correct. I don't know who did the highlighting, it might have been you. Yes. But those two, high, those, I would again um, like you to look carefully at those because my reservations about the resolution have to do with those two paragraphs in which were indeed highlighted. I did not highlight them. But uh, so one, there, I have three reservations about this. One is the use of the word unconstitutional when the, the word is not defined and when it is not, the, as, you, as you just said, it is not the function of this board to determine constitutionality. We don't do that. Um, the other is the, um, the, re the resolution asks the sheriff to, not, it says non-enforcement, and it seems a, a glaring contradiction of um, any of the oath that, not just Sheriff Semison, but any sheriff that takes. And the third thing I'd like to address would be the, uh, the, uh, the, the paragraph that says not to accept uh, any, any funds. And uh, my concern with that is that, uh, the, that this board is, c is constraining itself not to take COVID money or so. I mean, it, or this board or any future board cannot make that, can, cannot impose that constraint. So in effect, the resolution becomes any really an outrageous overreach of the board's uh, powers which are really very limited so uh, I'd like to before we see this again please comment on those or when we see this again please <coughs> please comment on those certainly and I, and I can tell you as well that I did highlight those paragraphs because I had some very similar concerns that you did and again when I drafted it I wasn't aware I was going to be gone during the exact finance meeting so I couldn't make the comments but yeah those were that's the reason I highlighted them is because I had concerns with the wording of them Dan? I'm just curious how this resolution landed here first. Was it, it just a natural assumption? It didn't? It went to exact finance. Oh, okay. Actually, I, we decided huh? to make exact finance and law enforcement the proper place. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm giving them my opinion point on their time what they want me to do for the next one, so I think we're fine with that. They're not going to take any action. To the sheriff's department when that, uh, to me, would have me voting against the resolution because uh, we don't need to start that. As I said, outreach, um, mm. overreach. I said yeah. out outrageous overreach. Yeah. So. so, so I'll just comment uh, at, at Exec Finance. They they did not act on that resolution. Um, they simply referred the matter to law enforcement committee. Um, okay. the, the the two entities involved in proposing this resolution today are not in agreement with that resolution. That's why you did not see that one today. They they are presenting this one, which is separate and slight and maybe maybe significantly different. I'm not sure from the from the one that was presented at Exec Finance. The one presented today is assumed to be the one presented one year ago to law enforcement committee. That's the difference. We of never them. we never went to committee. 
I, I don't recall that. No, so I, I, I thought it, it died. There. Yeah. It did not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and I think COVID kind of made all that go away <coughs> for at, at that time. So it never went to committee a year. And I just and I believe if you look at that last line um, to talk about expenditures, I think it directs um, the county board not to um, authorize any spending that would be um, contrary to the Constitution or on any any uh, legislative action. I don't think it uh, addresses revenues. I think it means spending. So, so is uh, the one that's going to come back or table <coughs> till May? Is that going to be? the same one that you've looked over Rick or are you going to be in contact with them somehow or is that going to be something that we're going to have to I would appreciate if Rick were not in contact with them I mean we want the corporation council's opinion we don't want them dealing we don't want them bargaining with okay but what I'm saying is if if it's not something that Rick will will okay on we're going to be looking at it again in May and here would be my proposal is because this one that was presented today is technically the one that's being tabled because this is the one that was on the agenda is the one right. that was um, what I can do for the next meeting is I can go through it and I can line out the items that I have concern with and then highlight any sections that I add as a suggestion for the committee to consider at the next one from a legal standpoint and then okay. you guys can decide what you want to do with it at that point okay if that, if, if that works for for the committee yeah it's my understanding that the resolution has to be amended to meet the county's template and I would suggest that that mm -hmm. happen before you review it mm -hmm. just in case uh, by doing that something changes the, the, the previous the one that went to exec finance was in the correct format mm -hmm. okay so Rick knows how to do it mm -hmm. and it, it just has to do it with this mm -hmm. okay okay any other questions Sorry for the delay. All right, set the next meeting date and time. Um, I would, uh, I don't have my calendar with me. I would only offer that perhaps we do it, <coughs> you wanna do it before the county board meeting in May so that you can, um, so that the resolution can go to county board right away and, and be uh, done and over with, so. Um, I, will, I will make whatever day and time this committee sets work for me, so. It'll be on a Tuesday. Um, the reason it's the reason we moved it from the third Tuesday was because it was conflicting with some other committee meeting, oh, okay. I believe. So um, uh, I just want to throw that out there. I, whatever day you want it to be is fine by me, but I just want to throw that out. What there. is isn't this? What is this? The third Thursday? Wednesday. Third Wednesday. Yeah, and this is what it's been the last two months. <coughs> I propose to keep it as a third Wednesday. Yeah, yeah that's, that's fine. fine. Well, after the county board. Then. Yeah, well, that's another, yeah, exactly. Yeah, wait another month. <coughs> so, and I don't, and I, I just threw that out there. I'm not going to make the decision for you guys when you want to address that or not. So, or does anybody have a problem with having it on the second Wednesday next month? I don't it's think I do. So, Pardon depends me? on the it's time. Twelve. We've got a conflict if we go past three o'clock on the second Wednesday. We should be fine. Well, I don't one. think you're going to go through all the public comment like you did today. So, no. if we start at one, I would, and it's make it a first item on the agenda. I think it went well, by the way. Public comments. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, it went well. Most yeah. of them. Yeah. May 12th at 1 o'clock? Sure. 1 o'clock. After the May meeting, if it's okay with everybody else, we can switch to morning for the summer. If that's okay with everybody else. Yep. Okay, May 12th at 1 o'clock. Meeting adjourned <coughs> at 2.37. And I would like to thank Tanya for stepping in as recording. Not Tanya, Tammy. <coughs> I'm sorry, Tammy.